how to get a tech job with no experience. But you need experience to get a job in tech. That's the biggest lie that I hear people say. It's actually easier to break into tech right now than ever before. Why? Nowadays, tech companies are looking less at degrees and more at skills. There are tech industries that are still overlooked to this day that make it almost impossible not to land a job in tech. I would know this because I've helped hundreds of complete beginners land high paying tech jobs and I myself, I went from making $10 an hour to working overseas, clearing six figures a year in tech. And I got started in tech with literally no experience and just one tech certification. So it's safe to say, I know what it takes to get a tech job with no experience. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do just that. We're talking the best tech industry to target as a beginner. Hint, it's not what you think. The exact certifications that get you hired fast, and the modern job hunting methods that actually worked. This is the same exact push button blueprint that I've used to help people go from zero experience to six figures in less than 12 months. So if you're ready to break into tech without any experience, stick around until the very end and I'll even give you the exact job boards that you need to be using to apply to these jobs with little to no competition. So when it comes to getting in tech and you have no experience whatsoever, where I see a lot of people make mistakes is choosing the wrong tech industry. There are some tech industries where they will absolutely require you to have a degree and you wanna avoid those industries if you don't have a tech degree. So some of the tech industries that do not require for you to have a degree are FANG and big tech. Also government sector, like government technology, they do not require you to have a degree whatsoever. The difference between traditional tech industries like FANG and big tech versus GovTech is that GovTech actually value certifications. I see it all the time where people will comment on my videos on TikTok and Instagram, and they'll tell me that certifications don't matter and that they would not hire somebody just because they have certs. And I immediately know that they don't work in the GovTech industry, but that's why the GovTech industry is so great to work in because they actually do care about your certifications. When you get certification in the GovTech industry, the government views this as you being eligible to work specific jobs in this industry. Industry. So what happens in the government technology sector is there's more of skill-based hiring that are associated to different tech certifications. So if you have, let's say the CompTIA A plus certification, that makes you qualified to work in entry level roles. If you have say the security plus certification, that makes you qualified to work in some cybersecurity analyst roles if you already have a clearance. And I've got other videos on exactly how to get a clearance if you don't have one. And then there's some more advanced and cybersecurity certifications that open you up to cybersecurity analyst roles, cybersecurity auditing roles, and even cybersecurity management roles. So these certifications are so valuable in GovTech and that's what really sets this industry apart. Wouldn't you wanna work in an industry where if you get a certification, it makes you qualify to be able to apply to different tech jobs? Government security clearances are something that are mostly exclusive to the GovTech industry, but there are even some FANG companies that do work with the government where they'll require you to either have a clearance or get a government security clearance. Getting a government security clearance is an absolute game changer. Most people who have a clearance make on average six figures a year. So just by getting this clearance, you're gonna be guaranteed to make six figures for the rest of your life. So what is a government security clearance? A government security clearance is a more in-depth background check where the government is literally just saying, hey, do we trust you with our government secrets? Do we trust you with access to our classified information? If you wanna be able to get a government security clearance, you do need to be a US citizen. You need to be able to pass a background check and you need to not lie to the government. Now, when it comes to having a criminal background, that's all case by case. I cannot guarantee that you're gonna be able to get a job in GovTech, but I have done an interview with one of my friends who had a clearance, lost his clearance because he ended up getting a felony and went to jail and then got his clearance back. So if you wanna watch that video and watch that interview and his experience, just click the link in the description below and you can check that video out. And what I typically like to tell people is if you aren't a terrorist, and you don't have terrorist ties and you don't have extreme amounts of personal debt like personal loans that are up into the hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollar mark i've seen people get clearances with bankruptcies but 
You just want to make sure that you're not falling into that same cycle. You got to make sure you keep your credit clean. You keep your credit up. So if your background fits these things, you can definitely get a government security clearance. And I always like to say that if you have TSA pre-check or if you have global entry or you've ever had a Twit card, that is a good step and a good indicator that you should be able to get a clearance. Maurice just landed an ISSO position and he had been unemployed for four months and he was able to get a $20,000 salary increase just by following the exact strategies that I'm going to be talking about in this video. Alberto was able to land a GovTech role that sponsored his clearance as well just by following these strategies too. Kenton was able to land a role that sponsored his security clearance after following these strategies as well. So trust me, anybody can do it even if you don't have any experience. Now, when it comes to certifications, there are only a few certifications that actually matter and will actually help you land a job. Now, the Google certificates, those aren't certifications. I don't even want you thinking about those. No, they will not help you land a job. On Udemy, those are not certifications either. That's just a certificate that shows that you've completed a course. You want to get actual certifications that are industry respected, like CompTIA certifications, Microsoft certifications, Amazon AWS certs, Salesforce certs, ServiceNow, right? There's a bunch of different certs that you can get, but which ones will actually help you land a job? When it comes to getting a job now in tech, I personally believe that there's only a few certs that are helpful. The CompTIA Security Plus certification, this will help you be eligible for entry-level IT roles in GovTech. Also, there's the Red Hat Certified Sysadmin certification, which proves that you can do Linux system administrator jobs. If you're looking at cybersecurity roles, I really do like the OSCP certification, but it is extremely hard. I will tell you that the OSCP certification is very difficult, but it does prove that you can do cybersecurity roles. Now, if you want to get into GovTech the fastest, this is going to be the path that you want to follow. You're going to want to get the CompTIA Security Plus certification and then start applying to entry-level help desk jobs. Entry-level help desk is the absolute easiest way to break into the tech industry. And I know some people are anti-help desk. They don't want to go that route, but trust me, it's going to help you get your foundational IT skills. It's going to help you gain experience. And after six to eight months, you can job hop into your dream dream cybersecurity role if cybersecurity is what you're interested in. Or you can job hop into cloud, networking. Some people even go on to doing DevOps roles. So this is a great way to build a foundation in your tech career. To pass certifications, you want to make sure that you're studying the right way. So for you to get certifications, I always recommend that people actually take written notes. Don't use laptops. Don't use any tablets. Get a notebook, get a pen and paper, highlighters, and start taking notes. I also recommend that people buy books for the certifications as well. So for Security Plus, all I used was Get Certified, Get Ahead by Daryl Gibson. And this literally was enough for me to pass the Security Plus in just 30 days. When it comes to the Red Hat Certified Sys Admin certification, you have a few different options. You can use O'Reilly's $50 subscription and you can get access to Sonder Von Voot's Red Hat Certified Sys Admin training. And this is something that you can use to teach yourself the Linux skills. But if you want something that's more hands-on with live instructions, homework assignments, apprenticeships, then I definitely would suggest you to book a free call with Yellowtail Tech. They can help you get your Red Hat Certified Sysadmin certification. And really when it comes to almost any certification, you can find free training on YouTube as well. You can look up course for Red Hat Certified Sysadmin. You can look up courses for Security Plus. Professor Messer has a completely free course as well. So you have a lot of different options to learn these skills and learn the knowledge to pass these certifications. Now, I know you might be wondering, okay, I get the certifications, but what about my resume? How will I even get noticed by these companies when I start applying for jobs? So what you're going to want to do is really lean into your transferable skills that you have, and you want to focus on anything that you've done in your current role or previous role that could be related to IT. For you to figure out what your transferable skills are, I highly suggest that you just utilize chat GBT and utilize AI to make your resume. You literally can take your current resume, 
tell ChatGBT that you're looking to transition into tech and tell ChatGBT to make a resume that utilizes and leverages your transferable skills towards the job description that you're trying to apply for. You'll attach your resume to this prompt and then you'll have a new resume that's more tailored toward this IT job that you're trying to get. Now, when you go into the interviews, you have to understand that you're not going to have real world job experience, but you will have experience and hands on practice from doing labs, from doing different trainings, from getting certifications. And you just have to know that you can come in there and learn on the job. A lot of jobs in GovTech, they do on the job training. And that's another advantage of this industry as well. And this has worked for myself and many of my students that have followed my GovTech blueprint, they literally just come in and follow my resume AI masterclass. And it shows you step by step and copy and paste exactly what you need to do to create an optimized tailored resume that will actually get you callbacks from recruiters. Travis used my GovTech blueprint and he literally said that he followed the blueprint verbatim and went through the resume AI masterclass and was able to do 31 applications. And he got two different help desk job offers that sponsored him a clearance. So literally, all you gotta do is follow it step by step and it will work for you. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, I highly suggest that you make one. LinkedIn is gonna help you a ton when it comes to making this transition into a new industry. Cause what you're gonna wanna do is start following different recruiters that are posting about tech jobs. You also wanna follow different people and connect with people that you might've known in the past because a lot of people have transitioned into tech over the past few years. So you never know who who you actually know in your network that might be working at companies that you're interested in working in. So make sure that your LinkedIn headline shows what type of job that you want to get. It talks about the certifications that you have, and it talks about the skills that you have and what type of jobs that you're aiming to get. Make sure that your about section is a clear depiction on where you want to go in your tech career. Don't focus on the fact that you don't have experience and how you're going to be able to come in and work hard and do well on the job. As you're learning throughout your tech journey, you want to make sure that you're making posts on LinkedIn and utilizing hashtags because this is how recruiters find people. They will search people that are utilizing certain hashtags for certain skills and certifications, and they'll see what you're learning. This will help you become somewhat of a thought leader in the space, even though you're entry level. It will just show what you're learning and what you're capable of doing. And this will have recruiters reaching out to you so that way you can start getting some job opportunities. So where should you go to find these different tech jobs. I recommend a few different job boards. So for GovTech specifically, you definitely want to be on clearancejobs.com. This is going to help you find thousands of jobs from government contractor companies that will be looking to sponsor your clearance. You also can utilize Indeed. Indeed is great for people that are brand new to tech. One of my VIP clients, he literally used Indeed. He had no tech experience, got a security plus, utilized my resume strategies, and he was able to get three different job offers within 30 days. So don't sleep on Indeed. There's a lot of opportunities there. Dice.com is also another good job board for you to apply to jobs at. And then there's also startup.jobs if you're somebody who wants to work at a startup company, because there's a lot of good GovTech startups out here that are making amazing products and have amazing teams and companies. So now that you know where to find these jobs at, let's say you're moving on to the interview process. For you to prepare for these interviews, even if you have no experience, it's very simple if you utilize AI and ChatGPT. So any job that you actually go into for an interview, you wanna make sure that you use ChatGPT to help you do the preparation. And you can simply do that by telling ChatGPT that you have an interview coming up for a specific job title. You copy and paste the job description into your ChatGPT prompt. And then you also want to attach your resume as well and tell ChatGPT to prepare you for a technical interview that you have coming up. Once you do this, you'll be able to tell ChatGPT to give you some technical interview questions that they might ask based off of the job description. And you could tell ChatGPT to give you some situational questions that they might ask that you will need to know how to answer utilizing the STAR method. The STAR method is situation, task, action, and result. So basically with these situational questions, they'll say, tell me about a time where you had a hard time dealing with one of your coworkers and how you are able to work through these issues and still complete the task. They want you to talk about an example, how you went through that example, what action you took and the result of that 
action that you took. And this will show them how you are as an employee. So you want to make sure that you know how you can really talk about things that have happened in your past and how that is going to relate to the tech industry and how you can utilize your transferable skills and your previous experience to come in and make an impact at the company. And this is going to allow you to turn not having any tech experience into an advantage because you can utilize your unique background to show them that, hey, even though I don't have any tech experience, here's how I've handled situations in the past. This is how I would handle it if I was working for your company. And these are the skills that I have. And I know that I'm going to be able to come in, work hard and do a good job. Because to be honest, a lot of these companies are just going to do on the job training. So you want to make the interviewer confident that you will be able to do the job even if you don't know all the answers. So show them how well you think through situations, how well you think through problems, and you'll be well on your way to land in your first tech job even without any experience. The biggest thing that you want to avoid when going into tech interviews is saying, I don't know. If you answer, I don't know more than one time, I promise you, you will not get the job. So make sure you spend time preparing for this technical interview because this is going to be the difference between you landing a job offer and not landing a job offer. So that's exactly how to get a tech job with no experience. If you want to learn exactly how to break into GovTech and land a job in a six figure tech career, click the link on the video on the screen where I break down in my completely free GovTech course exactly how to land your first GovTech job with no experience. I'll show you the exact certifications to get, how to build your resume, how to land your first role entirely from scratch. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'm going to see you in the next video.